Welcome everyone. The goal of this tutorial is to make sure that you can see the cat vehicle through the Gazebo client. You'll also be a little bit more familiar with how to interact with the Gazebo client, including being able to see whether or not your simulation is running in real time. So I want to show you a little bit of what's left over from the previous, um, from the previous tutorial that I ran. Uh, I want to show you that we have here our running simulation. So I still have the simulation up and running. I'm going to kill it and I'm going to start it again. So you may have had the simulation already running. You don't actually have to do this if you're running straight from the previous tutorial. Uh, but the reason that I'm stopping it is to show you, uh, in case you're you're coming back now and, and looking at this, is to show you exactly what kind of thing you can run so that you can see uh, the same thing that I'm going to see. So we're going to run here the first the uh, cat vehicle skid pan launch file so source develop setup dot bash if you already did this before you don't have to do it again ross launch cat vehicle cat vehicle skid pan dot launch just as we did before this loads the actual simulator but we can't see what it's simulating straight away and I'm going to start next. So once everything is up and going, hopefully nothing red flashed by. If something red flashed by, you know you might have something wrong. Let's next run GZ client. So GZ client is the gazebo client. We're running the server in the background. By running the client, it means that we can see what the server is doing. What you saw happen just now is something that happens to me a lot. I don't know if it happens to you or not, or if it will happen to you. Uh, but frequently, I try to start Gazebo and then it crashes, and then I try to start Gazebo again and it crashes, and I start it again and it crashes. Um, and I, I actually don't know why this happens to me. It doesn't happen to everyone. Uh, but this is one reason why we separated the Gazebo client from the server. Um, and if you look into the, the launch files, you see where we pass a parameter about uh, whether we want Gazebo to run in server mode, which means that it doesn't have the head up, or whether we want the head to be there. And here it is. You can see the cat vehicle. Uh, it's sitting around and it has this giant blue thing sticking out the front of it. So this giant blue thing that's sticking out in the front is the sweep of the laser sensor, the 180 degree SIG laser sensor. So we can zoom in a little bit here. If you right click and scroll down, then you zoom out. And if you scroll up, then you zoom in. So I'm going to scroll in here. And if you just click and move around, then you can see the, the car moving around. If you hold down shift and click and turn, this is how you can rotate things. So you can see this 3D environment gives us quite a bit of uh, exploration capability. But one thing that you also notice is that there's kind of nothing in this world. Um, so let's see what the tutorial recommends for us to do. Yep, we can see that, the giant blue thing. Uh, we are going to, in a few minutes, look at a different world, which has a little bit more interesting things. Uh, but this giant blue thing allows us to see um, exactly what the sensor lasers think they see. Uh, let's see here. So real-time factor, that's the other thing that I want to make sure that you have a good handle on for this tutorial. So let's look at my real-time factor. I'll show you where that is. 0 0.97, that's not bad. Um, but you can't hear it, but I can hear that the, the fans on my machine are operating at pretty high volume. And that means that all of my processor is being utilized and that um, that my machine is essentially running as fast as it can. So in order to meet this real-time factor, uh, which means that for every one second in simulation, one second in real time has passed, in order to make this work, it means that um, my machine's having to, to operate pretty heavy duty. And no wonder, because there's a lot of things in the background of this system. And as we start to look at what the individual sensors can do, you'll see exactly what that is. So what I want to do next is uh, go from this tutorial, which is kind of easy to just see how to load the client to see in sort of a 3D world what the car sees. I want to now, instead of visually seeing this, I want to see what the sensors on the car see. And in order to do that, we're going to move on to the next tutorial, which uses a tool called RViz.